got the extra long brim. Wow. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, Zen Bitchlap, the incomplete works of Zen Bitchlap. <laughs> There's never a beginning or an end to it. Yeah. So I just share from what happened with me. Obviously, uh, most of the interest and attention was about what I approached. It wasn't about the approach. Yeah. So it was always the uh, how I approach things was set sort of in a an uninvestigated uh, sand like quicksand, but it looked like cement. <laughs> and then I had a lot of opinions and ideas about what I approached, the different. And for me, in a sense, I wanted to get out of here for a long time since I was young. I don't know why. Obviously, there was something cooking. We say it is the basis of a lot of ad ad addiction, which is an irritability, restlessness, and discontent. Can't put your finger on it. And obviously you can't because maybe it would have been seen in a different light. But uh, there st seems to be an urge or a drive to get some kind of relief or to be able to exit how you were feeling at that moment. Hey. We have a dog park tonight in the room. Here we go. It's a dog park. Yeah. The donations are down, so I have to take in dogs now. I got to watch dogs, and I have to work on Wednesday nights. So, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, I ran into non-duality. Yeah, I wasn't looking for it. I'd never heard about it, actually. I guess it was in the late 90s. I uh, It was funny. I When I was young in 1920, I got introduced to the world of gurus and, and devotion and stuff. And actually meditation. And the meditation I really liked. And I got involved that after, you know, in for about four or five years. And at that point, Wanting to know God was a sufficient enough reason not to drink or use, which was amazing. But when I got disappointed in that endeavor, I went back out doing out drugs uh, with a vengeance. But when I got sober, I realized I had learned something. I didn't like the guru, a devotee dynamic. It just wasn't working. So I went, I looked into Buddhism. I had been introduced to it, but I got in keen in it my first few years of recovery to the point where I wanted, I went, I went to Asia, I went to Thailand and I went to a lot of Hinayana, uh, Theravada temples all around, went to Burma and Thailand and stuff. Uh, really felt, uh, you know, when I used to hear the concepts of Buddhism, it was like there was nothing seemingly I could grasp, but when at this second introduction, when I got sober, I was grasping some ideas, and the idea of anatta or non self was pretty interesting. Yes, if you've ever heard of it, um, supposedly Buddha uh, had a saying once where he says, You know, events ha happen, deeds are done, but there's no individual doer thereof. And it was a very vagueness of a sense of being someone, you know, a long lasting, independent, separate entity. It's a vague sense, but it's reinforced quite a lot by the mental activity. I was, that was pretty interesting, yeah, because suddenly I wasn't looking so much at what I approached, but how I approached it. Yes. I started, the, the spotlight started to, uh, land on the correct point so to speak mm -hmm. so i went for that did meditation i liked vipassana uh the ones where they would give you points on the body and you would sit for hours and they'd add a point every day the people didn't speak english i didn't speak thai you were just in a temple drinking really watered down soup i lost like a pound a day which i couldn't afford so I was there for 21 days. I lost 21 pounds. I was tripping my brains out, completely hallucinating, <laughs> seeing mandalas going, 
one way and the other way at the same time, like the like the uh, the yin yang symbol and <laughs> stuff. And it was weird because in Thailand, uh, it, you know, the the uh, Buddhism is like they get they, young men get conscripted. They have to spend three months as a monk. Yeah, they have to do it. They don't, it doesn't matter if they have interest or not. It's like, I guess in Israel, you have to be in the army. There's no volunteering. You you have to spend a certain amount of time. Well, in Bo in Thailand, you got to be a monk. So these young guys who were driving on little motorbikes and they had ghetto blasters and they were wearing like these robes with no interest whatsoever, they were living on at the same temple and they had these incredible like nuclear powered uh, slingshots, yeah. You know? And I lived in a little tin. They call it a cootie. And these kids would use hit me hit the house with big rocks, and <laughs> like it sounded like a, an explosion. And so, as I was attempting to, you know, transcend this mortal coil, ow, pow, pow, and the funny thing is, because Buddhism, they don't like to kill animals a lot of animals get dumped at the temple. So there was a whole bunch of mongrel dogs. And whenever the temple bells played, they started howling like dogs from hell. It was amazing. <laughs> it was just insane. So... <laughs> uh, <laughs> what got me interested in this place, it was called Wat Rinpoin, is I went there and I saw some Westerners and they look sort of bright, you know? And I came back about four days later and they look brighter. So I said, wow, all right, I'm gonna do this. And I went in there. I didn't know you'd have to, it, the brightness was from malnutrition basically, <laughs> you know what I mean, whatever. So what, whatever, but I, I left there and I gave it the best shot I could. And still there was something that was going off that I didn't have my finger on. Yeah. But I had a strong suspicion. And then I was introduced to the course of miracles. Uh, and I saw in the course of miracles with this crazy group, the Endeavor Academy in Wisconsin, at this point, I thought the only true sign of spirituality was was energetic uh, demonstration, yeah? Like Kundalini or going off or whatever. And this place was rampant with it. We were, and uh, I was introduced, I met this lady there and she was the biggest light uh, junkie of the whole place. She was just fucking going off, Kundalini, tripping, everything bright as a fuck, unbelievable. And we started going out and she'd been there for five years and she gave me she gave me a great lesson. She says, you know, all of this shit doesn't mean anything. All of this demonstration. And I sort of got it. And I left that Course of Miracle uh, place. And uh, the funny thing is, I went there one of the first times they had a, an event 999 where the world was supposed to end. Yeah. Now, a lot of them believed it. I was on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. And they had spent tons of these people used their credit cards and they charged over hundreds of thousands of dollars and 9109 showed up. <laughs> they, it wasn't the end of the world. And they had this huge problem with debt. <laughs> so what happened is somehow I was led to non-duality. I finally heard it in a park in Berkeley delivered through an East European woman who spoke very, very, you couldn't, you would, you need to have a, like an amplifier to hear what she was saying, but it didn't matter because I got the like unspoken. Yes. The, just something was there. I went a few more times and then uh, the big crescendo was I was at this famous guy who came out of Zen and he was giving a talk uh, a non-duality, but the, the whole event demonstrated duality. So there was all these people, and then he was in the front, and all these people thought he had something they didn't have. <laughs> and it was just a weird dynamic. So I was there, and he started joke laughing. He says, you know, I'm like a man standing by the river selling water. 
Yeah. And I used to, and I, wow. It's an old Zen saying. And he says, he started really laughing. He says, it's even funnier that I'm a man standing in the river selling water. And sort of I got it and I left and I never went back. That was it. I think that was the last satsang I went to. <laughs> you don't have to get wet. You are wet. Yeah. This is the beauty of this message. This is not another long string of things you're going to have to get. First, you get the invitation. Then you go to the dinner. Then you have the dessert. Then you make a vow and all this. No, you don't. What? You don't get anything. You are that which is being spoken about. Yes, this is beautiful because I hadn't heard that. Maybe I had heard it, but I, that's not how it was translated. And it just, it was like a German shepherd who, when they confronted with something they're trying to understand, tip, t you know, tilts their head and shit like this and that. It was sort of like that hearing satsang. Yeah. I didn't do that much. I went to a couple of people. I saw him at the end. And then, uh, Jesus Christ, I don't know. There was a lot of doors closing and opening inside. And there was no doorman. <laughs> things were just closing and opening and uh i came to some conclusions or brought to some conclusions one of them was it felt like an unspoken yes it was just vibrating the message hasn't stopped really since then and then in time it became the last answer which is really cool because it takes away the need for any more answers, yeah? Which is incredible. And uh, what happened was I was involved with sharing in AA on a level in AA. And really the meeting that I was leading became a big experience of mis, uh, misadvertising. People thought they were gonna learn how to do something and we were just having satsang, really. <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah. And then it just went on and on. Then I got, we, we didn't have a plan. That's why when some people call me and they say, I've decided I want to become a teacher. I said, well, I would rethink that, bro. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? I would rethink it a little bit. So, so, but, so I'm trying to be of help in AA. The whole message is changing. And to some people in AA, they thought the message became out of AA. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it hadn't been grown, homegrown. It was out of AA and it brought a, a lot of schism, really. I didn't un understand I'd run into so much static, but it happened, so to speak. And then, so I felt like the prophets never recognized in his own village. And so I, how am I going to get in touch with other recovered alcoholics and addicts you know no one's ever i've been nuded completely in my own town i was called non-self paul buddha paul fourth step paul once you have a caricature you're fucking over no one's hearing anything anymore so we put up website we try to make website yeah the only people who knew anything about computers were newcomers and they'd always go out. They'd get loaded again. So the the project of launching the, the website took like two years until we ran into this guy in San Jose, Steve, not San Jose, a little north of Stan. And he, he was so, he was so, uh, I have a lot of thanks for him. He, he cobbled together a website, Zen Bitch Slap. And then people started to hear some of the stuff we were doing outside of AA, and they were calling me for interviews on on the internet, which I didn't know anything about. And in a weird way, without knowing it, I blew one of the traditions of recovery, which is anonymity. The cat was out of the bag. I said, fuck it, you know, because I did a live video and there was my face. So that went out the window. And then I start seeing the spiritual addiction, the addiction uh, expressing itself through spirituality, which was incredible, really incredible. And uh, here we are, 20 something, 30, 25 something years later, here we are on a Wednesday night. Yeah. And I feel really 
the weirdest thing. I was never looking for it. But one of the crown achieve achievements has been the Zooms, in a sense. It really has been. And we have to thank Mike here, but we have to thank uh, what was him who started it? The guy from Australia. David. He's, who? Greg? David. Greg, David. David started it all. Oh. I had no plan on doing anything. And then he asked, he made up a, two recovery meetings and other meetings said, you want to do these meetings? And so I said, yeah, and there we are. Yeah. And so, ah, the message hasn't changed. How you sp speak it does. Because the hose gets older, whatever like that, sees it in different ways. But what? But the seeing can be seen in different ways, but it's just seeing. It's just the awareness, yeah? And the real relief and, the, and, and where we abide is in the before, yeah? The awareness before the thoughts, before the claiming of the seeing and the hearing and the feeling and the tasting and the touching, there is what we are, awareness, yeah? What happens usually here when there's the act of being identified as a thing, our realm is now what's after, yeah? And a lot of shenanigans can happen in the after, especially about what's the before, <laughs> yeah? And the only real true guide you have is the before. And this is the beautiful, to me, the beautifulness of non-duality it's not another approach. To, it's not an approach. It, they're just putting out a fact, being ourselves reality, and allowing it to sit with us. And hopefully how we'll view things is not looking for what we are, but looking at what we're not. Yeah, And telling the truth about what can be described, what can be understood, what can be experienced, and seeing it as not us, yeah? Not from the after, because the after trying to see it's not the after is just more after, yes? But seeing it from the before, which is where all the seeing is anyway, yeah? Unfortunately, when the seeing is, is recognized in the after, it's given another meaning and direction, and it's called looking, yeah? So... All the while we're looking for what we are, we are that what we are that what's looking. Yes, that is the awareness, sort of clothed with conceptual ideas, with a little shine of time, and with a little direction, looking through space. And in that sense, we don't sense it as awareness. We 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 hear a message that it's me looking. Yes. Yet, as they say in, in non-duality, what you are looking for is what's looking, yeah? So you're using what's looking to look for what's looking. Now, would you want to try to affirm yourself out of that or just through negation, recognize you were never in it? Are you wanna, do you want to start from being in it and have to affirm that you're out of it, out of it, out of it? Or do you want to see you're not in it through negation? I'm in the camp of negation. I am. I didn't plan it, didn't look for it. This is just how it played out. I don't, in my little logic, my little pea brain, and then the larger logic, nothing else makes sense. It just doesn't. Yeah, because I had the evidence when I was a kid, when Every week in school, they would go into the three attributes of God, which is omnipresent, meaning everywhere, omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing. And I was really innocently confused. Why am I not bumping into this? I feel wherever I am is some, it's, 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 it has to be an aspect of everywhere. How can I be out of everywhere? Why am I not running into this? Because... Yes, there's the idea there's a me that's going to run into it. Yeah, you can't run into what you already are. You can't run into it. Sorry. 
You can't. I can run into every other fucking car. I cannot run into the car I'm driving. I can't run into it. I can run into a wall, a tree, hit a person. I cannot run into the car I'm driving. Yes? So this is the point. So there's a negation. I, and it's not a rehabilitation. When someone points out or light points out to me the selfishness of this system of self-centeredness, I do not, at first, it was, oh, I've got to become less selfish. I don't go there anymore. I just see I'm not that which is selfish. That's what I do. That's the end of the investigation. Seriously. I don't, I don't t talk to tons of witnesses. I don't take notes. I just greet that reaction as not me. That's as far as I go. Seriously. And when I wanted to go farther, that which was coming through me told me no fucking way. Yeah. That's it. Just see what you're not. That's it. Yeah. Because there's the head is saying it's seeing what you are. And then its reaction is you really want to greet that with I'm not that. Yeah. Because its reaction now is trying to say I'm not that the body and everything like that. Yes. But it's reinforcing its idea of being the subject now. Negating that goes a long way. Yeah. If you only negate now the object of investigation, oh, I'm selfish, Paul, you know, this and that, and not the one that's that's saying it's aware of that, yeah, which is it's it's piggybacking on the awareness and it's using it for a mutated way of looking at itself and saying it's different. That gets negated. Yeah. This is the twofold non-duality. Everyone, it's pretty easy with, with a lot of situations in, in this world to recognize the first aspect and maybe get a hint that it could maybe not be you, or at least it could be different, or it could be subdued. But very rarely do you get to the second, the subjectifiedness of it, that's judging the object of self, yeah? That's critiquing it. That's putting more demands on it. I've got to start stop judging. You're all you're about is judging. Yeah. This is why in the famous faith mind in Zen, they, he goes off on this riff and he says, listen, stop cherishing the truth. Just fucking lose interest in your opinions. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because you're trying to cherish the truth from what you're not. Yes. So the whole thing of faith mind, it turns on you and negates you. And at the end, the guy yells, not to. That's it, yes? Not the you that's known and not the you that's knowing it. Neither. Bang, boom, yeah. So I see, you know how much work most of the head reacts to when it sees the unfinished product of the object, Paul? Fucking the scaffolding gets ordered, the urban renewal project. All right, I've got to stop doing this, do more of that, that. This is bondage, bondage, bondage. Yes. Step back, see both. Neither, yeah? If you're only one or not the other, it's not going to be... <laughs> it's not what you were expecting, yeah? Because it doesn't deliver the goods. But when you see both as not you there's going to be an ease and comfort that's not produced through effort. Yes. Yeah. You're going to be empty because you are empty, not by throwing every fucking thing out. And yet the biggest fucking weight is left behind you. No. Yeah. You're empty of that. You. Not through any fucking work. It's empty. Yeah, there is no you to be emptied. It's an empty idea. Yeah, we're giving it all the meaning it has. So this is how it went with me. I had don't deviate from it. You know, this is if there's a lot of stairways to heaven. This ain't a stairway. Yeah. 
the only thing good about the stairway from heaven, if you fall backwards and tumble down, that's the stairway of heaven would be valuable at that point. When you got up and you fell back to where you never left, that would be incredible. Yeah. That to me is what its value is. I think all of these, you know, ladders to the stars, transcendence are meant to fail. Yeah. That's their success. Yeah. If you keep trying to find what you already are, what would be the greatest compassion ever shown to you? Failing at it. Yeah. And then with the right understanding, and I believe non-duality has the right understanding to recognize the success in those failures instead of more demands to do longer retreats and get less selfish and all this shit. No, just a, re a relief from the need to be relieved. Yes, it's awesome. So I felt like everything I approached was uh, infected by the approach. Everything, every fucking thing. And I believe certain things were immune to it, but nothing I found has been immune to it. Whatever you meet is going to be infected with you meeting it. Yeah. I don't see how it's so fast. There's no way in time there's a faster process of that. I just don't see it. So this is a real surrender. This is surrendering, recognizing the futility of trying to arrive at where you already are, recognizing the futility. Yeah. You don't have the ability to reach as far as you need to reach because you don't need to reach at anywhere. Yeah. When the arm drops back, it'll find itself. Yeah. It's, it's, it's disguising itself constantly by reaching, reaching, reaching. When it fails and you fall back, aha, that's what it was all along. Yeah. Don't tell me you haven't had it. This, this aha. I'm sure you have. It may have been, you know, graveled over quickly or whatever, claimed by the head, but every one of us has had many, many free samples. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a free sample from your own bakery. <laughs> you can have the whole pie. <laughs> Mama, do you want some orange jelly beans? No, thank you. Instead of Amelia. Can you hear me? Paul. Paul. Paul? Hey, Just I wanted to meet Amelia, Amelia, but I accidentally muted you. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, anyone have any questions? Share. Yeah, what did you say in the last few seconds? <laughs> what did I say? I think I, I said some personal opinions I have for, for some of you, but thank God it didn't get through. I was futility. Yes, futility. The reaching. The reaching for something. And then finally, finally, there's a giving up. And when your arm, when your hand falls, it falls right on what you were reaching for. Yes. The bakery. The bakery. Now, can't you? Yes, the bakery, the free sample coming from your own bakery. Yeah. The point is, you don't have to go through 800 reaches. You can learn it from satsang. Yeah. Satsang is the easier, softer way. The association with the truth produces, let's say, in a place where there can be cumulative. Uh, you know, like a built up effects. Well, satsang is built up by a we that's bigger than all the individual seeming eyes. Yeah. Drink from the fucking fountain. Yeah. Something going to get stuck in your throat. And when you spit it up, you'll see it's not you. <laughs> Do you see it? 
sometimes you were oblivious. Then some self-awareness occurred, right? Somebody said something about you and it hit somewhere and then you realized, yeah, I'm a fucking parasite. I take advantage of people. Yes, it's not a good, you don't, you'd rather not know this stuff, but it's now been revealed and there's a reaction to that. Yes. And the reaction to that commences to, to list tons of orders of what it now has to do with this new responsibility of becoming better or ba da ba ba da ba da ba yeah? That second voice is not you. It's just an, that, first of all, the first voice ain't you, it's thrown, and so is the second voice, it's thrown from a vague void, yeah? So if you, one isn't enough, two is not, not two. So you see you as an object being gone over by you as a subject, and you see both of them as not you, or as self-inquiry. That which is asking who am I, and that which is being asked, both of them are not you. And what happens when the one who's asking and the asked meet at the same moment, they neutralize, and there you are. Haven't you noticed that when all this shit that you think is really going on stops, there's something that's still there? That's us, yeah? When the movie stops, you the screen doesn't, yes? The screen is holding the space for all the movies. When the movie stops and there's a pause, there's that sense of screenness. I mean, and maybe, just maybe, we're not recognizing it, so non-duality will give us under, an understanding so it can be recognized. It doesn't. Ne after that, it doesn't need to be recognized, but when it's unsuspected, it can stay unsuspected. We want to cross that where you have a familiarity with that pause. You've recognized something, and the understandings of a of non-duality are going to put into stark contrast the misunderstandings. And that recognition won't just stay a recognition. Yeah. Can you imagine arriving at a place? And very quickly thereafter, you can never, you have never left. What an incredible message. Yeah. What place in all your freaking spiritual peak experiences things brought you to a point on ne having never left? This is what's offered in non duality on having never left. Yeah. Is that the goal for most people? No. Transcending, merging, being transported to a fifth dimension or something. This is on ha upon having never left. What an incredible relaxation, if you can hear it. Yeah. What, I mean... The burden of time and space is lifted off your imaginary shoulders. Yeah. Does your head tell you how sick you are when you're sick? Probably doesn't. It's only when you get better you realize how fucked you felt. Yeah. We're in a trance here quite a lot. Yeah. You may be bitching and complaining about it, but the head it has a little bit of a blackout. It's like your Wi-Fi blacks out. You don't access anything. You're out to lunch. You're like in a trance. And yet when you get this invitation, you see it, not from it, because you can't see it from it. You see what you're not from what you are. And there's real relief in it, real relief, yeah. You know what, a lot of this world 
they have these medications. And if you look at it, it's basically admits it's, it's in uh, its lack of solution, which it will mask the symptoms. Don't you think the head's doing that all day? It's masking symptoms. It's like living and looking through a gauze. Yeah. And some of us have like 12 layers of the gauze. You can barely legally say you can see. It's basically you, all you're doing is going over shit past. Yeah. As the Course of Miracles says, I, we see only the past. Well, with these gout, with these layers of gauze around, you're basically just living from memory, <laughs> basically. You don't even have to see the person. You know they're out to get you and shit like that. Every situation is brought to a previous memory of another situation. I see only the past. Yeah. I love this message, man. It's... uh. Hmm. It gives great worth to slackerhood. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever read like the, uh, what's the one, Avashta Gita or something? One of the famous non-duality things where they talk to these people, they just get super lazy. They don't even want to lift their eyelid up. It's too much work. Yes. I think Ramana talked about it. A large, a long, lazy period. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Jeez. I meet people, they can't, they have to be doing something in five minutes. Everything is, the, the, the coffee in an hour has to be, the value has to be accrued for them to have permission to have that coffee in an hour. <laughs> and then there's another thing given, another uh, hoop to jump through. And then, oh, you get a dessert of, a biscotti with the yes, it's just it's just incredible. <laughs> oh, it's slavery, eh? Did do you oh whatever you know? Consciousness does it seem to demonstrate any thought and effort in being conscious? Then why do you believe through thought and effort you're going to? realize something that doesn't demonstrate any thought or effort. <laughs> it's, it's fucking insane. It is. It's insane. Yeah. It's all about us. Everything. God, you know, they say we were made in the image. We No, God was made in our image. Basically, <laughs> we beat it to him. We beat God to it. God wasn't, we weren't made in God's image. <laughs> we made God in our image. Yeah. <laughs> I got to accrue value and it's favoritism. <laughs> I don't know. Just remember simply, look at your head. It has a couple of main drives. One is a false recognition. It's trying to get out of what it's not in quite a lot. And it's trying to get into what it's not out of. Now, if you could see that quandary right at the conception, you wouldn't have to study its failures on page 34. You would expect them to be failures on page 34 with this premise of trying to get out of what you're not in and trying to get into what you're not out of. It just, it explains everything. Yeah. Or Hoang Po, Whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. Go into the head, listen for five minutes. The head has that which can be perceived as what's perceiving. Yeah. Just you don't have to, is this going to be a four-year program? No, it's like four seconds. It's like the big knockout punches of non-duality are usually one sentence or two sentences at most, yes? It's not a long drawn-out thesis. It's a whack. You know, we were talking about the other night, you know, the person's flipped out and then the other person slaps him and come to your senses, Jimmy, boom, 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 you know, and then he wakes up. Yeah. 
<laughs> what do you think Zen bitch slap is? I'm doing it here, and uh, hopefully it's it's contagious. Where uh, just come on, wake up, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I broke the thing. I came from a long family of, of divine proctologists. I threw away the gloves. I said, fuck it. No one's up the ass of so. So you don't need to be pulled out. It ruined my career. My family's super unhappy. Yeah. But the truth had to be told. You're not, there's no you up any ass of self. Yeah. It's all imaginary. It's all like filling in, you know, painting by numbers. Yeah. Yeah. This, therefore, that. I feel something vague. Let's call it disconnected. <laughs> I know I'm completely here, but I think I'm out of the moment. <laughs> Don't you see the inness of where you are saying it's out of the moment? I mean, how can that escape us? <laughs> you're right dab in the moment when your head is saying you're out of the moment. It's insane. So yeah, all right, thank you. I'm looking forward to the asylum, really. <laughs> I am. I want Mia to bring me baskets every week of gluten-free biscotti. I'll gladly go. I like the white outfits. Yeah. I have a nice, they'll give me little projects I can do. Yeah. They'll I'll have like blow up dolls and they'll put them in my little room and I give satsang to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Can't wait. Seriously. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine just wearing white every day? Pretty good. Like Ramana. I mean, everyone has these goals. What a great success. He wore diapers his whole life. Unbelievable. We were thinking of doing with Speedos, you know, in our at the we were supposed to have a speedo contest at the last retreat. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to have to be in the future. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm so happy you're here and I hope, I know it's working. Yeah. I don't hope. I know it's working. Something in you keeps coming back and it ain't you. Yeah. You probably think I shouldn't be doing this. This is ba 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 ba. You keep coming back and one clang of the bell sounds exactly like the clang in the other bell. And then you realize there aren't a bunch of bells with similar clangs. It's just one bell, one clang. Yes. Infinitely clanging on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Look at everyone's face. Mike's look happy as hell. Mac Mike had finally got the spiritual burrito. He was just yeah, right in Mexico. He was starving. He got the spiritual burrito. Had to be delivered from the asylum. Yeah, you had to bring it all the way down. That's right. Well, something brought it all the way down. And you, you wouldn't you maybe, but well, yeah, I know. We drive. Our ambulance got stopped in Tijuana. We had to actually <laughs> drive. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Anyone? If not, we'll just sit here and luxuriate in the moment I don't want to go. Nothing to... white outfits yeah would you still go to the asylum if it turned out they weren't white outfits well we're gonna go we're gonna do the uh adult onesie all white <laughs> and then it's gonna come with a zipper so when we pass away the, it'll be a body bag so so color doesn't matter with what we were wearing yeah Nice. Just it's a uh, five extra dollars more of a zip. Yeah. All right. I got my onesie on underneath here. <laughs> there you go. We're going to go with onesies. Yeah. Make little, you can have an animal, you know, if you want to be a rooster or something. Yeah. Something like that. A little totem animal. 
I got to be a water dragon. Water dragon. Gary's got his hands up, so we'll see what animal he wants to be. <laughs> All right. uh, I, I'm an animal that's just foolish enough to ask a question. Good. Yes. Uh, yes. So you, I'm, I'm thinking about, you, you know, your fourth step, Paul, your inventories and stuff. So I'm just thinking about it, uh, a place in uh, doing those inventories where I had the profound sense that when I, I realized that done harm to other people, that that, that wasn't me. I, do, I don't have any wish to do harm to others. And, and, and so I'm listening and I'm thinking, is that another side of the coin? Is, is that one who, or I'm confused about that. Does that make any sense? Yes. Maybe you could talk to that. So there's the one that you were doing an inventory about, and then there's there was a another aspect talking about the inventory. Yes. Uh, talking about it, but but it's more like a feeling. It's sort of like. Wow, when, the when feeling the, is good. I go with the feeling, bro. This has nothing to do with the two voices. It has to do with the claiming of the two voices to mean something. Yeah, yeah. When when the meaning of the second voice isn't the same meaning that you've been living under, it can be helpful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Just like everything, every doing isn't necessarily either good or bad. It's given a meaning by the idea of being the doer of it. Yeah. The yeah. meaning is the problem. The meaning. Oh, well, yeah. And sometimes if you're having a feeling, that's beating the meaning of the head. So. But th this felt like uh, each time it feels like a good feeling. It's like, wow. Right. Yes. I, good. I, I don't want to hurt people. I don't want my actions to have harm to others. There's nothing that I would value above their well-being. That's true. Great. I know. That's a fantastic thing. Just recognize that the head will attempt to claim that and turn yeah. it into something else. Yeah. yeah. Question the question the question. This isn't about everything... The second reaction to the first is always bad. No, we're talking about a possibility. With you seeing it, it limits that possibility. Without you knowing it, it increases the possibility. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, just but, oh, seeing the pothole up above, so it, you can exactly. avoid it. And of course, we're trying to talk to the pothole as a giant black hole and huge with the hopes that embellishing it will get something across yeah but it's that it's that which is giving it a meaning yeah is the key yeah yeah, and sometimes yeah. when you feel instead of think the feeling is a good indication you're getting a different meaning on it yeah so great seems like it's becoming a habit so fantastic yeah thank you this yeah. isn't about throwing the water out. It's just cleaning the water. Yeah. Yeah. So having the recognition that there's a mechanical claiming of whatever happens. So whatever happened with you doing the inventory is that a feeling came up and said that you, won't, you wouldn't want to hurt anybody and stuff like that. <laughs> it's a true intrinsic feeling. Yeah. Now the yeah. head could attempt to claim that and let's say blow up a balloon of pride or whatever and stuff. Yeah, but in a sense, before it could do that, it was beaten by the feeling of that altruism that you felt so great. You've had an unadulterated sense of something, not an interpreted sense of something. That feels right. Yes, and you'll get familiar with that. And more and more of what your life is going to be is going to be it's almost going to be you've admitted you're blind and now you're going by braille. You're going by sense and feel. Yes? Yes. 
Yes, you're not believing your eyes anymore. You're going, you're touching and sensing and feeling. And mm. you're going with that direction more than the, the you know, the mental eyes direction. Yeah. It's just like that, obviously. There's an admittance of a blindness. And therefore, mm. when you go somewhere, you're feeling things. Yes? Yes. Yeah. 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 And then you find your way. Yeah. Yes. And it's and it and here in this this event of time and space, it galvanizes over time because you're not missed you're not led to falling off the cliff. Yeah. The leading goes well. So now feelings are the thrust before the thoughts are. Yeah? Yeah. That's an intuitive sense of feeling now becomes more trusted than the thoughts. Exactly. After. Yeah. And that's different. That's 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 new. Yes, it's new. It's like what it's like when the horse is in front of the cart, and you know the horse is in front of the cart, because in fact the horse is in front of the cart. We're just living as if it isn't. Yeah, or it could be if I do something or I work hard and shit like that. No, the horse is in front of the cart. You're just getting more aligned with it. Yeah, so you don't have to think. Because thinking is a form of seeing when you're fucking blind, yeah? Thinking is a form of seeing when you're blind. Now you're being led by sense, feel, touch, yes? Intuition, Mm -hmm. recognition, Mm -hmm. energy. Yes. You feel things before you think things. Yes. Yeah, this is part of it. Part of traveling lighter, for sure. And the Mm -hmm. fact... The, the validation of it is you felt it over and over again in this same, this one aspect. So, yeah, I think a better way has perhaps shown up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Usually when you think before you feel, it tells you what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, when you're feeling before, the feeling tells you about other stuff. You know what I mean? I if think so. You feel it. You feel something <laughs> about the space or the energy or the people or the situation. It, mm-hmm. It's not a feeling about the feeling. It's a feeling almost like a sonar or radar picking yeah. information up. Yeah. You get yeah. that? It's very yeah. important. Yeah. 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 It's sort of like a present thing. It, it's evidence of the present. Before. Well, that's the right thing. Now. The thoughts will interpret the feeling and use it where the feeling will interpret the thoughts. Yes. And then you'll see the bogusness of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. Mm. And this will become normal. And this is why it's surprising to me that you brought it up because it's going to become more normal. Yeah. You're going to be led by a sense or a feeling than that more than thought and opinion. Yeah. 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 It seems to be a better guide. Well, just yeah. like you said, just admit, turn your out blindness, better. admit your blindness and you will see. That's the point. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just getting another new pair of glasses, just fucking. <laughs> yeah that's great gary thanks for that that's sure thank you one more mike then we're gonna start saying goodbye i think i don't see any others all right gary thank you so much you seem to be way back gary feeling much better yeah Doing okay. Thank you. We need a couple of uh, stiff Zen bitch slaps soon. Yeah. 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 Maybe you'll have something uh, in Auburn sometime. Oh, we cool. will. We will. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. But I think some of them are coming down here at the end of April. Uh, some people, hmm. have, um, Kathleen's coming and other people. So 
I'll, yeah. I'll look at the website. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have it. Probably may have an event here for satsang at the house. Yeah. All right, Eric P. Good. Nice to see you, Eric. Thanks for the call today, Andy S. We have not forgotten, forgotten the Eel River. Don't worry. Yeah, call me up. I got a, uh, I got really good internet too, so we could do a satsang out there. Oh, good. We will. Yeah. That yeah. Be, yes. Great. I have some. I got lots of room for lots of people. Oh, good. Well, maybe we'll have a day, eh? Yeah, or a couple of days. Bring your tent and some right. instruments and have a good old yeah. time. All right. We'll have uh I'll send my my dogs on it. <laughs> yeah, All we right. got we got room for dogs. All right, we'll do it. We'll do something. We'll Sounds do good. a little event, like two day or three day. Yeah, man. All right, we'll get on it. Thank you. Kathleen, see you soon. Eh? Yes. Oh, there's my main man, David. David from down under. Nice to see you, David. Sherry from San uh, from San Diego. I almost said Santa Cruz. San Diego. William S. Christy. Yes. Uh, Terry Camarillo. Bill Churchman. The SS Enterprise. Dennis W. Lynn D. All the clouds. What was that song? Oh, clear skies. Nothing but clear skies for Lindy. I knew. I knew uh, Zen bitch slap is going to demand your physical presence soon. So I, no I will, I'm, I'm coming by fall end of the month to see you. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to hear any excuses. All right, Alan Olson. Always a pleasure. Yes. Alameda. Chris. <laughs> Alameda, Chris. See you, Chris. Are you going to have a car on Saturday, I hope? Oh, good. All right. I'll see you later then. We got Dana. She was born 1978. Wow. <laughs> we got Mike Clark, Mexico. Darren, I don't know where Darren is, but nice to see you, Darren. San Diego, Steve. Gio from Brazil. Susan H. from our neighborhood. Amelia will not show herself, but she's lurking. She's lurking somewhere. Rob M. from Massachusetts, I think. Let's see, we got some phone numbers. Anal Annalise, Annalise, I think. Fletch, yeah, give me a call, Fletch, tomorrow. Susanna W., my great friend. Uh, let's see, Geo Susan H., I think I covered everyone. Hey, thanks, everyone. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Holding the space. Here's the, uh, here's the live group. Yeah. They're squatting at my house. I don't know. They, <laughs> They say it's a retreat. I just feel, I don't know. No. I don't see any basket, donation basket going around. It'll be a big uh, thing going on. All right. Thank you. Thank you.